Go, go back to your seats here. Go, go back to your seats here. We somehow, sometimes we have radical people. But tonight, there was a, a sweet spirit in the house. And I want you to just hug on somebody. I want you to hug on somebody. Come on. And I just want you to don't let, don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go. I want you to just hold to that person and give them a real hug. Hold on to that person. The Spirit of God is moving right now. He's touching right now. Your concerns, the hurting that you're feeling inside, God is healing right now. He is healing right now. So as you share that love, it's the love of Jesus that's hugging. That embraces the love of Jesus. It's the embrace of Jesus. So I want you to just hold on tight and share it. Because God is healing some hurts right now. He's healing some hurts right now. I can sense the Spirit of God is moving and is healing some things that's been down there that, that, that you've been struggling with. Somebody's getting healed right now. Somebody is getting healed right now. And he's moving. And he's moving. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Oh my God. for your grace, O oh God. We thank you, God, for loving us, O oh God. We thank you, Almighty God, for, for what you are doing, God, tonight. Oh my God. Father, you're worthy you to be praised. Oh God, you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. Father, we thank you, God, that in your presence there is liberty. God, we thank you, oh God, there is wholeness in you. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. God, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you. Father, we adore you tonight. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say he's worthy tonight. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, Lord. We thank the Lord for his presence here tonight. How many of you enjoying the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. God God knows all our needs, you know, every circumstances. Yes, yes. The God who loves tonight. May you know that He loves you. I welcome you tonight. Amen. And I know that we can only continue to climb the mountain to reach our summit in the presence of God. 
And I know as we read upon the Lord, amen, the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah that those who read upon the Lord shall mount up with wings like an eagle. The strength shall be renewed to them. The Bible says they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. I may believe that tonight. Amen. I want to just encourage you with a word tonight before we have the cooperative prayer. If you have your Bible, I just want you to turn to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 64 tonight. Anybody have it? Would you just read verse 4? We just want to read one verse. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 4 tells us that the Lord acts in other words in behalf of those who wait for him. And tonight during this course of the 21 days of fasting I know many people are praying and they want to see the hand of God move and they want they're praying for their needs to be met. And sometimes it may be that there will be some discouragement on your path because you think that God is not answering fast enough or meeting that need fast enough and it can be discouraging again but sometimes you want God to act immediately you want him to act now but in the process I've learned that in the process of doing this fasting not only the 21 days of fasting but many times when I engage and prepare myself to fast, I have come to a place to understand that God wants you to wait. Wait on Him. And I want to share with you tonight on this aspect of waiting on God's time. And this morning, a brother and, my, and myself, we have having a conversation. And we understand that as a child of God, nothing happened by chance or by accident. Everything happened in God's time. Tell your neighbor God's timing. God's timing. God's timing. Hallelujah. So if you're gonna take some notes tonight, I want you to to understand this clearly the time tonight. So some of the things while you're going to the fast, I want you, you to see yourself or, or in the aspect of when you're praying and you believe in God, these are some of the things that if you under have the understanding that it will help you to continue to wait on the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. There are many principles in the Word of God. And the principles of the Word of God doesn't change. Methods may change, but principle doesn't change. And I've learned in the scripture that one of the principles that stands out um, most of the time is the concept of waiting upon the Lord. This is a critical issue because God will include His time. And even though that we are praying and we want God to, to manifest, we want God to... To, to meet our needs or to solve a problem, he's going to do it in his time. And so therefore it's critical. He has an awesome plan mapped out for you and I, for each one of us. But he only reveals it one step at a time. Amen. Again, sometimes we wish we could see everything. So sometimes we see in just a drop of water, but in God's eye it could be a sea. But all we can see for the moment is a drop of water. Are you following me tonight? But when we follow tonight, you and I, God's people, that when we follow God's plan, He is glorified and we are fulfilled. Amen. However, tonight, if we don't seek the Lord's guidance each day, we will end up automatically following our own course. Yeah. And that's why it is important, the Bible says, that we must wait on the Lord tonight. I want everybody to know, and everybody I declare this word, because as a child of God, we have come to understand tonight that God loves us. And God has promised us to meet our needs. Some may believe that. 
God promised to meet our needs. That's why we are serving Him. Not only because He can meet our needs, but first of all, He is God. And we know that He can do the impossible. He can meet our needs tonight. And He promised us that He's going to meet our needs. But He doesn't give us everything we desire when we want it. And this is important to understand as we go along. Even though that God says that He will meet our needs, God doesn't give us everything one time. And there's a reason for that. Otherwise, if you do, tonight God will take second place in our lives. Amen. Because our main concern as a, as a person would be the things He could do for us or the things that we can get from Him. Are you following me tonight? And so that's why it is important. Furthermore, tonight, our requests are in always in accordance with His will. And therefore, sometimes we are praying for some stuff that is not in His will. It may be right to us, but it's not His will tonight. And so we're going to find out some things as we go along. Even when, we, when people or when we align with His plans, we may have to wait until his fit, it, it fit His schedule. Again, so what you could be praying for, it could be according to His word. But still, we have to wait till it fit his schedule. Somebody say his schedule. His schedule. His schedule. Because sometimes we could go to God and say, God, I pray according to your word. So you're supposed to do it for me now because your word says that. And we can remind God of his word. But yet still, even though it is an alignment with what God says, it must fit his schedule. Are you with me tonight? We will see that. So instead of seeing delays as obstacle when God doesn't answer our prayer, instead of seeing it as an obstacle, right, we should look at them as a loving intervention of our Heavenly Father. So delay, first of all, is not denial. So if God has delayed answering your prayer, amen, don't think that God is not going to answer your prayer because delay is not denial. Are you following me tonight? Amen. So therefore, we, by rushing ahead, we miss His very blessings. So even though that we see that He's delaying us and we try to rush ahead to get things done, we, amen, do ourselves an injustice because we will miss the blessings of Almighty God. Amen. So Isaiah is telling us tonight in, in verse 4, chapter 64, it says, it tells us that the Lord acts in behalf of those who wait for Him. Because he's omniscient tonight. Tell your neighbor God is all powerful. He's all knowing tonight. And he knows all about us and works in every aspect of our life to accomplish what? His will. And conform us to his likeness of his son. So whatever God is doing in our life is so that his image of his son can be seen in our lives. Are you hearing me tonight? Amen. Everything that he's doing. So nothing that is coming your way tonight, if you are a child of God and you love God and you're walking in his will, as I said this morning to my brother, whatever is coming your way is because he's allowing it. And though in your eyes, it may, it may seem like it's detrimental, God is not going to send things to destroy your life. We look at Job's life. God allows Satan. The access to interfere in Job's life, but he says, don't take his life. You can do everything else, but don't take his life. And I want you to know, when God allows things to come into our life, amen, no matter if it may seem detrimental, amen, God has a purpose for it, because whatever it is, God is going to use that so that his image can be seen in your life and mind. Somebody amen. say hallelujah. Hallelujah. So throughout our lifetime to, to, um, tonight, he is committed, God is committed to removing anything that hinder his good purpose in our life. So therefore, when God allows something in our life, we got to understand he's working out him and something for our benefit. Are you hearing me? And there are things in each one of our lives that we don't even notice or take notice of it that God says need to get rid of. Are you hearing me? And so God sees a heart. Because many times, as the Bible says, the, the heart, amen, no good thing dwell in the heart. The heart is desperately wicked. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, with the heart when it's without God can imagine. Someone who don't have Christ. We are thankful that we are born again. And now the Holy Spirit lives in us. Amen. And we, he sit upon the seat of our heart. So therefore, tonight we are not on our own. Are you hearing me tonight? 
We are grateful. But I want you to know many times our words, amen, doesn't match up with what our heart is saying. Are you hearing me? Because many times when people speak, it's just a camouflage or they're wearing a mask on, but it's not coming from their heart. So the lifestyle is not matching up to what is ahead. The true person or the real person is what's going on in the heart of the individual. Amen. Are you for me tonight? Because I can say that I love God with my mouth and deep down in my heart, there's no love for God. Amen. Are you hearing me tonight? And so therefore we must understand we are required to wait for God's timing. And that's what I want to share with you for these couple of minutes. We are required to wait on God's timing tonight. To receive. When we wait for God's timing, we will receive the best that He has for us. We must be willing to wait while He acts on our behalf. How many know God is acting on your behalf tonight? Just imagine, amen, the positioning of Christ, amen. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. He is a high priest who passes through the heaven. And therefore, He is making intercession for you. He's praying for you tonight. Ain't you glad that you have a God who is praying for you tonight? Amen. He's acting as a priest because the Bible said He's interceding on our behalf tonight. And so therefore, we are required to wait on the Lord because when we do wait on the Lord, we will receive the best from the Lord tonight. Are you hearing me? And so we, we need to wait on the Lord. Don't hurry. Amen. Don't rush God. Amen. Don't try to do it on your own because you will miss the best that God has for you. So there is a reason and there is a purpose for why God wants us to wait. If you're praying and you're not seeing things happening, keep on praying. As I said, keep on trusting. I keep on even believing what God's word says. Because in his timing, whatever God is going to do in his timing is going to work for our our betterment tonight. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. hallelujah. The reason why that he wants us to wait tonight is to ready the circumstances. What are you saying? I'm saying when we are walking in the Lord's will tonight, He's actively working in the situation and in the people, amen, around us or who is connected to that situation that we are praying for, amen, people in our life to bring about the right condition at the appropriate time so His plan can be fulfilled. Are you hearing me? So that's why sometimes we pray for those people and I'm just using one, one instant of a situation. We may have a court session or a court matter and we are praying on behalf of that person and we are praying God not only touch that person but the judge or the lawyer or the people that is going to make the decision. Are you hearing me? So when we pray we wait on God's timing because God is touching even the people that is connected to the situation that we are praying for. Amen. Are you hearing me tonight? This is important. Because your willingness to wait for, to, for God's timing, I mean, it reveals how much we value what He wants to give us. And if we understand that waiting on Him, He's given us the best, then we value what He's going to give to us by waiting. Amen. I hear me tonight. But impatient, when we become impatient, amen, it demonstrates that what we really want is to have it our own way. That's why the Bible says conquered all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing, amen, that it worketh patience. And let push patience have its perfect way so that you will, in the end result, that you will lack nothing in your life. So impatience demonstrates that we just want to have things our own way. And therefore God is saying, I want you to wait. Pray, trust me, seek my face, but wait on me till I do it because I am fixing this. And when I got through with it, it's going to work out for the benefit of you. Yeah. Somebody say wait. wait. So the first thing that we understand, God saying when we wait is to ready our circumstances. The second thing that we understand is that the reason that God wants us to wait I mean, is to purify our motives. Why are you saying? Because when God doesn't grant our, our request tonight, we should examine ourselves to see whether we are acting for selfish reasons, out of envy or without consideration, even whether it's other people might be hurt by what we are praying for. So therefore, God, amen, the Lord's desire is for the, for the motivation of our hearts to flow from a Christ-like character. So therefore, God says, when you're waiting, amen, you get to check yourself. You get to see if you're not praying things out of selfish ambition tonight. God don't want us, amen, to have wrong motives or ill motives when we are praying. Because the, let the truth be told. 
If we are praying in the things of, of a, in a selfish nature, would God answer that prayer? He wouldn't answer the prayer. And so therefore tonight, when God will have us to wait, amen, so that he can purify our motives. Our motives must be right. Amen. Are you hearing me? That's why the Bible tells us the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Not everybody is praying that God will hear the prayer. But the one, amen, who is praying, praying from the right, right motives, from the right heart tonight, amen, in alignment with God's word. Not of, of some evil desire or selfish motives tonight. And so therefore tonight when we are praying, let's pray with the right motives. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Why are you praying? God, I want you, amen. Amen. That caused that sister in the back day, amen, to close some more. She can't speak again. Because maybe both of you had a little conflict. And now you're praying that prayer. Are you hearing me? That's not a, 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 a genuine, it may be a genuine prayer for you. You want that woman to, to not ever speak. But it's not, in the sight of God, it's a wrong prayer. Amen. Oh, yes. Are you hearing me tonight? And so therefore, when we pray, we got to pray with the right motives. What are, let's ask the question tonight. Why are you praying? Why are you going through this fast? Why are you making the sacrifice? If it's to get small, that's a good thing. But it shouldn't be the only thing. It shouldn't be the first thing on your list. Are you hearing me? But anytime we are praying, amen, and we're going to wait on the Lord tonight, it's to, it's to bring ourselves in consecration. Are you hearing me? So that God can work to our life that we will draw close to Him. Because in, in, in every one of us, there is things that is hindering us in some way or the other. Oh, yeah. Though even if we think that we are righteous, I mean, God sees things that need to be cut off. Oh, yeah. Are you hearing me? Because as long as we live in, in this body, there will all be temptation. There's all the things that is popping their heads up. Amen. And I want you to know it's not going to go, go away as long as you're living in this body. Amen. Every day, amen, the enemy is going to come against you. Oh, Flesh yeah. is going to try to raise it. That's why the Apostle Paul is saying, the things that I should do, I find myself not doing. And the things that I, I shouldn't do, that is what I find myself doing. He said there's a warfare that is taking place within me. Are you hearing me tonight? Isn't there a warfare? There's a warfare that is taking place. And so therefore God is saying when we wait, amen, he wants to purify our motives. The third thing I see that when we wait tonight, amen, to protect us from making mistakes. Are you hearing me? When the Lord sees us headed in the wrong direction, he intervened by putting obstacles in our way. Because some, some of the obstacles that is coming in your way is not the devil. I want you to see this in this context. Because sometimes we tend to believe that everything that is happening up to us and it may be a little negative to us is the devil. But if you're going off course tonight, God will put obstacles in your way. Because he don't want you going the wrong direction. So he will put some stoppers are you hearing tonight. He loves us too much to let us head off on a path of destruction. Alright. Are you hearing me tonight? Amen. God loves you tonight. He don't want you going the wrong direction. And that's why sometimes, sometimes it's good that certain things are happening. Are you hearing me? Because it's, it's a, a God has placed this obstacle, amen, to stop you from going off track. Hello, somebody. Amen. The other thing that I notice in waiting upon the Lord, amen, is to make the greatest impact for our lives tonight because when God withhold and answer prayer he's not being unkind to us when he when he don't un, um, answer your prayer but he's actually demonstrating pure love by doing what is beneficial for us because sometimes when we pray and if God says no we think we get mad with God but as one person says and I heard this many times that God answer in three ways yes wait a while or no but no is an answer but the thing is, we don't like to take no for an answer. Because when we pray for something, we want God to do it for us. Right away. And we don't understand that God knows better. Because something that we are praying for, God is saying that is dangerous. If I ever give you that, it's going to cause you to go off course. Are you hearing me? 
Ain't you glad that some things that you pray for, God answered our prayer? Amen. So there are some times, amen, God will not answer our prayer. His goal tonight, God, His goal is to transform each of us tonight to be the best person we can be possible. God wants you to be the best that you can be. Because there is treasure in you that needs to come out. There is giftings and talent that God has placed that can be beneficial to His kingdom. And so He wants the best to come out of you. So when confronted with delays tonight, we have three choices. Every time that God requires the wait, we can respond in the fallen way. When He tells us the way, we could do the number one thing. Manipulate the situation. What that means, we often tempted to maneuver a wrong obstacle until we get our way. We manipulate the situation. The problem is that our manipulation places us outside of God's will. And we eventually have to live with the negative consequences that follow. You want to have it your way? If you do it your way, even if it says from Frank Fernandez said, I'll have it my way, I'll do it my way. If you do it your way, you will have to face the consequences. Amen. I hear me. The better thing is to do it God's way. Amen. I hear me tonight. Somebody say God's way. God's way. God don't want us to manipulate the situation. Trying to do it our way. Are you hear me? If we try to do it our way, we will come out of the, of, of the will of God. God wants us not to manipulate the situation. Secondly, when God tells us to wait, sometimes we quit praying. You'll find many people, they will quit praying. When the Lord doesn't answer our request tonight, we can simply give up and never pray about it again. And there are people who have done that. However, some of the best things in life require the longest waiting period. I hear me. They require the longest waiting period. Don't quit praying. I hear me. Tell your neighbor, don't quit praying. But we must wait and watch God work on our behalf. After making our request tonight, we could choose tonight to trust the Lord. That's what God wants us to do. Trust in the Lord tonight. Amen. Let him accomplish his will in his own time and watch him work it out. Amen. That's why, you know, one of the favorite phrases I love in the scripture tonight, and I continue to say it every time that I'm faced with a situation, and this too shall pass. Amen. I hear me. Many times in the scripture, and numerous times, this is the word, and this too shall pass. I hear me. Season comes and season goes. And that we got to understand, amen, that whatever we are facing, amen, and whatever the situation may be, amen, if we wait on the Lord, amen, and we trust Him, this too shall come to pass. What are the requirements for you and I for waiting on God? Because we are a generation that is constantly moving. I hear me. Everything is moving at a, a, as a fast pace, even in the world that we're living in. Many of us do not take the time to sit quietly with the Lord and ask Him to speak to our heart. That's why I encourage people, when you are praying, fine, pray. But there are times when we, when we finish our praying, we get up and leave. I'm not just talking about the church, I'm talking about your own prayer life. Did you ever stop to listen to what God had to say? Because prayer in its simplicity is a dialogue between two, not one. Amen. I hear me. And so your praying is not just telling God your needs. You must listen and hear Him speak to you. Because God wants to speak to you tonight. I hear me. So we need to do that. Perhaps that's why many people in, in, our, in our church today, they're experiencing trouble and pain because they haven't listened to God. Amen. And if we want, amen, amen, God to work, amen, and we want to do what God has us to do and walk in the will of God, we got to listen to what He's saying. Amen. I hear, because God is speaking. God is always the one that is speak, amen. He's a linguistic God. He speaks, but therefore we must learn to listen. 
when we speak because sometimes when we don't listen amen we we listen to what self is saying and we tend to believe that is what god is saying but it's not god and we do things and we end up amen having to pay the consequences for doing something that is not what god wants i hear we say it's god but eventually if it's god then it will it will prosper and when it's at a field, we say, well, God tell me, God will not tell you to do something that will, will, will be destroyed. If God is going to tell you to do something, it's going to be that it's going to prosper. Amen. I hear me tonight. Because when God speaks, things, amen, come into place. I, that's the type of God that we serve. So within the Lord requires not only time, but the fallen attributes of what, uh, as well. Trust God. So waiting on the Lord requires us to trust Him because God's best only come in His way and His time. Are you hearing me tonight? Somebody said, trust God. Trust we won't always tonight understand or appreciate what He's doing. But we must trust Him and obey His direction. God don't want you to try to figure Him out. He just wants you to trust Him. And whatever He said to you, amen, amen, He just wants you to hold to that word tonight. Somebody said, trust God. The second thing I have learned, amen, in waiting on God, the requirements is humility. Because waiting on, on the Lord also requires for you and I to have a humble spirit that acknowledges that His way is better than our way tonight. Are you hearing me? Don't be puffed up. Don't be prideful. Amen. But humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And God said, if you do that, in due time, He will exalt you tonight. Somebody say, humble yourself. Humble. So this is the attitude that we must have, one of humility, not one of pridefulness, not one that is feeling puffed up, well, I know it all, amen. I want you to know I have learned a lot of stuff in, in the time that God has taught me, but I'm still learning. Are you hearing And there's things that I've learned, amen, even through Bible school, I have to put that aside. Are you hearing Because God is constantly teaching us. But we have to put ourselves in a place where the Holy Spirit, where we become teachable. Are you hearing me? It doesn't matter how many years of experience we have or how many years that we have been in church and that. We got to be in a place of humility. We are to humble ourselves. Let God teach us tonight. Amen. Are you hearing me? Somebody say humble yourself. So humility is the one. In fact, in our, in our life as believers, God don't want us as, as believers to be puffed up. We must always be humble. Are you hearing me? Humble. The third thing is patience. God, let me say this to you and to all of us here. God is not our errand boy who follows our instruction. And sometimes we feel that like God is our errand boy. Amen. Fetch this for us. Go, go get that for us. I am. God is not our errand boy. We give our God our to-do list. And tell God he had to do this. God is not that. On the contrary tonight. We are the ones who must wait for Him to provide exactly what He has planned at just the right moment. And that's what He wants to do. Do it in His timing, in the right moment. Although the wait may be long tonight, I want you to know His best is always worth the delay. Isn't that so? Don't be quick to, to grab everything that you may think is God. Because not everything that comes away is God handing it out. Amen. And sometimes the devil can give you stuff. He can put things outside there because he's fishing. And if you go after it, if you don't hear from God and you don't wait for God, you may go after something and it takes you away from serving God. It takes you away from your time with God. So we got to be careful and listen to him. Amen. It's not so tonight. If one of the things also is courage. Somebody say courage. courage. Waiting in the Lord requires fortitude. To resist three temptation. Temptation to follow our own schedule. We must keep up our minds focused on what God desire and not what we want. Are you hearing me tonight? Temptation to follow whose schedule? Our schedule. But it's not about our schedule, it's about his schedule. Alright? Second temptation. The temptation to yield to the pressure of others. Because people may be quick to offer advice tonight. But we must follow God's will, not theirs. Are you hearing me? And especially, we must not, as believers, we must not take counsel for ungodly. Hello, somebody. Amen. We must always listen to what God says. Are you hearing me tonight? 
what God words are. And if somebody who's a believer and they share with you or they're speaking to you, their words will be confirmation of what the Bible says. What God's word said is not going to deplete or take away what God's word said. Because if somebody isn't going to encourage you in the Lord, they're going to encourage you from God's word. Amen. Are you hearing me tonight? Amen. And so God is saying, don't yield to the temptation of the pressure of people. Are you hearing me? The third temptation is the temptation to be afraid. We may wonder whether the Lord ways could work for us. There is no reason to fear because he protects, he defends his children when they walk in his will. Are you hearing me? And if God leads you to do something, you don't have to be fearful. If God said this is the way how to do it, you don't have to be fearful. It might be unknown to you, but I want you to know if God tells you to do something, amen, he got your back tonight. Amen. Are you hearing me tonight? It may be unknown to you. It might, be, it might not be something that you're familiar with, but if God tells you to do it, then do it tonight. You know, Isaac was in the land of Gerah. And while everybody was leaving to go to Egypt because the grass was green there, and Isaac and the, the people in that, that, that country was, was experiencing a famine and a drought. And while everybody was running to Egypt, and when God spoke to Isaac and says, Listen, I don't want you to go to Egypt. I don't want you to fall in the crowd. I want you to stay right here and plant those seeds. Are you hearing me? He could have said, But God, everybody knows that you a waste of time planted in a land that that is that has a drought there's no water the land is patched there's no moisture in the land so the seed is not worth i'm sowing in that ground but isaac choose to believe god are you hearing me and sometimes when god tells to do something it may be foolishness to you or it may look foolish to other people but if god says it then do it tonight God, the Bible says that this, but Isaac planted and he obeyed God. Amen. He reaped it a hundredfold. In fact, in the scripture, in Genesis chapter 26, you will read that Isaac, amen, he became so wealthy that they start even to envy him. Oh, yeah. I am. When you walk in the ways of God, God will bless you. When, you. when you choose to walk and trust him, even the unknown path, amen, he's going to guide you tonight. Somebody say, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. What if we fail to wait for God's timing. Adjust, adjusting the Lord clear direction is an act of rebellion. So if God said go left and you're going right, you're rebelling. Are you hearing me tonight? We're trying to say, well, okay, we're going in a direction, but God said left, but let's go right. We are just in the Lord's clear direction. We are acting from rebellion. We will result in his loving discipline. So when you go in rebellion against God, God will discipline you. Do you know that tonight? God will discipline you. God will crack the belt on you. Amen. And when He does, don't say He hates you. He loves you. When we fail to wait on God, hear me now, this is important. When we fail to wait on God, we delay His blessing. I hear me. So sometimes we delay the blessings. That God has already, amen, released us because we fail to wait. When we go our own way, God doesn't bless our disobedience. Amen. Are you hearing me? I said God doesn't bless disobedience. We heard that tonight. Even while you were kneeling, certain things were said in alignment to what I'm seeing here tonight. Are you hearing? God doesn't bless disobedience. And you could, if you walk in disobedience or you do things from a disobedient spirit, God will never bless you. I hear me. We delay God's blessing when we, amen, when we walk in disobedience. Well, when we don't wait on God, we bring pain and suffering upon ourselves. Because trying to adjust the Lord's plan by stepping ahead and doing what, amen, we deem like is reasonable, amen, cause more problems. Oh, yeah. I hear me. It doesn't matter how right they look in your eyes. If God didn't tell you to do it, don't do it. I hear me tonight. Amen. That's why many churches today, they're not doing what the Spirit of the Lord tells them to do. They're doing what they think is right. They, they want to do it, amen, because it, it, a lot of people love it. I hear me tonight. And sometimes we, we refrain from what the Spirit of God wants to do. I hear me tonight. We do things to please people. There is, there is a church name now, um, Seekers Friendly Churches. I hear me. Because when you go inside those churches, the seeker friendly churches, you're not going to hear something, amen, 
that is going to cut down in your spirit. I hear me. It welcome you to whatever you're doing is okay. I hear God loves you anyhow. Yes, God loves you. I hear me. How many know God loves you? Amen. But He don't love the sin and the disobedience. I hear me. Amen. And so therefore we must understand we bring pain and suffering upon ourselves when we walk in disobedience to God. You know another thing we experience? We experience confusion. When we don't follow God's will, we wonder what is happening in our lives. And everything is confusion. I hear me. Every, we don't understand which direction to go. Why? Because you're not waiting to listen to what God has to say to you. We cause other people to suffer when we don't wait. Because a decision to sidestep the Lord's way affect others because they share in the consequences of our disobedience. I hear me. When we walk in disobedience, parents say, let me say this to you. When we walk in disobedience tonight, I want you to know our children, our family will experience the suffering also. Hello, somebody. Amen. I hear me. If, if one man's sin in the beginning can affect the whole human race, I hear me. You think if you sin for yourself, it does not affect your family? It does. That's why you must have this understanding that when we do something, it's going to affect the people that we love. We cause other people to suffer. Let me close by this. What can we expect as we wait from God's time? And I close with this. When we wait upon the Lord's timing and we wait upon the Lord, believing His ways is the best way. I hear me tonight. Somebody say His ways is the best way. He will fulfill these promises in our life. Let me say what these promises are about for. God will show His goodness to us. And you can write the scripture down, Lamentation chapter 3, verse 25 to verse 26. God will be good to you and I. The second thing that we understand from Sam chapter 40 verse 1 and 3 that God will answer our prayer. I'm talking about, amen, when we wait upon Him, what we can expect. I hear me. God will be good to us. God will answer our prayer. We will see fulfillment of our faith when we obey Him tonight. I hear me. The other thing that I notice is that when we wait upon Him, Amen. What will happen to us? Amen. He will enable us to conquer our struggles tonight. I hear me. One of the reasons that we must fast and, and seek God tonight is because there are struggles in all our lives tonight. But we have come to a place to come broken before God tonight. I hear me. If you if you're not broken, He can't fill you. That's why God says, Amen. A broken spirit, Amen. A, a broken and contrite spirit, Amen. God will hear when you're broken tonight. I hear it tonight. He will cause you, amen, to conquer your struggle. And lastly, we'll experience God's peace if we walk in His will. Amen. These are the benefits tonight of waiting on the Lord. And I say to you tonight, it will be required from you and I, even through this 21 days of prayer and fasting, to wait on Him. I hear me. Don't get impatient and say, I'm going to give up. Say, well, okay, there's a lot of irritation and the toxin. I mean, it is a hurt in my being. I'm going to give up. I want you to say, wait on the Lord. Are you hearing me tonight? Wait on the Lord. There is benefits when you wait on the Lord. Because why? God is, 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 is working His purpose to you tonight. Wait on Him. Don't give up in your prayer. Amen. Don't fall to the peer pressure. Are you hearing me? Don't let the struggles that they're going through, amen, dictate to you what you should do. Allow God's word to dictate you rather than the troubles that you're facing. Are you hearing me tonight, somebody? Let us stand to our feet tonight. Are you hearing me? What can you do to increase your trust in the Lord in His timing in your life? I want you to know tonight. We had a great pouring out of His presence for the past couple of days. And I want you to know the Spirit of the Lord is in this house tonight. You have knelt before God. You have poured, you made your petition, your request to the Lord. And I'm saying to you tonight, let's join with me tonight. Come on, let's lift our hands tonight. God, I want to be more like you tonight. Come on, you say that. I want to be more like you tonight. Father, mold me, God. Father, mold me in and make me fashion me, God. Lord, help me not to be impatient. 
to be impatient in Lord. He sensitized me from the things of the flesh and sensitized me to the things of the spirit. God, I ask of you tonight, Lord. God, I thought that 2014, oh God, would have been smooth sailing. But God, even to this moment, God, I've experienced trials. I've experienced valleys. I've experienced some stuff that God had not expected will be happening in such a short time in this new year. But God, I'm going to trust you tonight, somebody. God, I'm going to believe in you, somebody. I'm going to believe in the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Oh God, I believe you tonight, Lord. God, you are the bridge over troubled water. God, you are my healer tonight. God, you are my deliverer tonight, God. Revelator that he's known today, God. 
Lord, on that Lord's day, he heard your voice and you tell him, come up to the sun. And Father God, you have, you have shown him things, oh God, Father. God, I pray tonight, Father, that even though, oh God, that, oh God, whatever we experience in our life, and maybe people don't understand what we're going through, you do. You know everything that we're faced with, God. You know every rock, oh God. You know every stumbling block, oh God, every obstacle tonight, every hindrance, oh God. Every weakness tonight, Father, you know, God. But I ask you tonight, Father, that we will hear your voice. Oh God, Father, that we place ourselves in our position to hear, God. That we will hear you when you call, hear you when you speak to us tonight. I know you're speaking even now that you love us and you care for us tonight, Father. So I declare tonight, God, every need represented here tonight. God, I pray tonight, meet every need, God, tonight, Father. God, I'm here longing for more of you tonight, God. For more strength, oh God. More wisdom, God. Father, I more, oh God, that we will draw closer to you tonight, oh Lord. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Touch our hearts. Touch our life tonight. Give us the strength to continue. Give us the strength to stand. Give us the strength, oh God, Father, tonight that we need to continue to run this race. Oh God, Father, make it to the finishing line. God, I pray as we wait upon you, that God, we know we put everything in your hands tonight. We commit everything in your hands and say, Father, take control in Jesus' name. Come on, lift your hands and just wave with the heaven tonight. Can you just sing that one more time as we give the praise for do that tonight? Just one more time, just sing it out to the Lord. Hallelujah, tonight we give him praise, somebody. Say thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for victory. I thank you, God, for doing it right now. Come on. I thank you, Lord, for meeting that need. I thank you, Lord, for some of that problem. But I'm thanking you in advance. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you tonight. You know best, God. I'm not going to fall, oh God, Father. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to hold your hands tonight. Come on. Just tell him tonight, God. Thank you tonight. Thank you tonight. Thank you for strength. Give him, come give him a clap offering tonight. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for his goodness tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. We want you to know tonight, just a reminder. Amen. Tomorrow night we're meeting on the prayer line.